that's probably the best answer I've heard ever from a candidate. Most people have no idea what I'm talking about when I ask that sort of question. Okay, uh, how many years did you mention? Three, I think? Two. Oh, two, okay. And you're applying for hedge funds, essentially. Yeah. You have a couple of hedge fund interviews. Yeah. Okay. And on a scale from one to ten, where five is average for your years of experience, how, where would you, and ten is God, one is trash, where would you rate yourself? In what? In your C++ skills. Uh, probably like a seven, seven and a half. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so in hedge funds, sometimes a lot of them, so I've interviewed a couple of hedge funds. They actually almost start off with like C++ language questions. So they don't start with lead code. They start with language mm -hmm. questions because they want to first speak to you as an individual, see how much you know before they even get you to code. Because there's no point of spending half an hour trying to code with you if you don't know what a constructor is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've seen that before. Okay, and so you're comfortable with me starting off with like C++ related questions before we even get to operating systems and all that shit? Yeah, sure. Okay, we're gonna start easy and we're gonna start moving it up a little. Um, okay, how does a lambda look like in C++? So you have to square brackets where you put your, uh, like whatever you wanna capture and then the two uh, opening and closing curly braces, you put your parents in between. You then write the arrow operator with the return type. You can skip that also and then your function body, yeah. And then semicolon. Okay. Which one of those three, the capture clause, the uh, argument mm -hmm. clause, and the body, which one of those three can actually be ignored or not not included in, the, in when you define a lambda? Okay, so you can definitely skip the return type. Uh, I think you can also skip I don't think you can skip the function body. Can you skip the the parameter list? Like the, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I vaguely remember, maybe you can skip the, the parameters as well. I don't think you can skip the capture clause and you can't skip the function body. Yeah, you're right. Let me ask you this. Now I'm taking it a step higher. This is more than an intermediate question, okay? You already talked about lambdas mm -hmm. being translated into functors. And I have a class mm -hmm. called foo. It has no data mm -hmm. members, but it has one method yeah. that takes in nothing and returns nothing. Mm -hmm. How big is that object? So if I do size of that object, how big is it? And this, this method is virtual, right? No, it's not virtual. So there's a class with a, a non-virtual method and no data members? Exactly. Okay. Uh, I think the size is probably going to be one. Most probably it's going to be one. I, I'm not sure if it's implementation defined or if it's, it's not going to be zero because then you could have two objects of the class and uh, like the reference of both will be the same address, which is, which the standard prohibits that. So it has to be at least one. I am not sure if it has to be exactly one or it could be more. It's one, okay. So good good job there. Yeah. Now what if I made that method virtual? Yes, uh, you now need a, a virtual table and a virtual pointer to the table. So now it becomes eight, I guess on 64 bit systems and uh, four on 32 bit systems. Okay. What sort of cost do I incur by adding a virtual method beyond the increase in the size of that class? You now have to worry about uh, the runtime, uh, uh, the runtime type information, and uh, so when you, uh, if you, if you make any uh, any calls or uh, use anything that uh, that can be uh, that the compiler can know what needs to be called at compile time. So it's like if you're using something by like a dot function or something, that's that should be, remain the same as if it was non-virtual. But if, you, when, if you're using a pointer or using the arrow operator, 
now you actually need to go through the VPTR to uh, uh, go to, like you have one re uh, indirection to the table first, and then from the table you have another indirection to the actual function that needs to get called. And uh, this is uh, sort of not predictable because uh, it's dependent on the runtime uh, type of the object of the pointer. And uh, this is costly. This can lead to more cache misses as well, like the instru instruction cache miss. And uh, yeah, and you also introduced two uh, indirections. So that's why it's costly. Yeah, that's good. It's called dynamic dispatch. It's a cost incurred at runtime. Let me ask you about um, virtual inheritance. Can you tell me what that is? Um, you need it to uh, bypass the diamond problem. So the diamond A, B, and C, both B and C. Yeah, both B and C inherit from A. So now you have two copies of A, one in B, one in C. If Let me ask you a different question. I want to move to C++ more like the best practices stuff. So this kind of tests mm -hmm. like how much C++ code you actually write. So okay. what, why should I use null pointer instead of using like zero or null? Yeah, so I think null, uh, like the uppercase N-U-L-L, -L, that null used to be uh, just a type def to the value zero. Mm -hmm. So uh, essentially, if you have a function uh, overload that takes an integer and uh, a function overload that takes a pointer, and if you pass, if you call function null, uh, it's ambiguous because you don't know which one to call. So uh, that's why null pointer was introduced, and that makes it more explicit what your intent is. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best still the same that, thing. Yeah. That's probably the best answer I've heard ever from a candidate. Most people have no idea what I'm talking about when I ask that sort of question. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, let's say you have an object, okay? Let's just call it class mm -hmm. A. The object is of type A. Doesn't matter what's okay. in it, but let's just say I declare it in my main function, very simple one line, const A and then variable name. So a const object called, let's just say, foo of type A exists. I then okay. do I then do object A. So my next line, I'm declaring another variable of type A, call it bar, equals std move A. What happens to A? Let's actually assume A has resources inside of it. So what I'm getting at here is what happens if I try to move a const object? Yeah. Uh can you move a const object? Well, uh, I don't think you can move it, can you? I think that, that's going to be a compilation error, or will it not? So see, that's the question. What will happen? So if you think it cannot be moved, and you're correct, mm -hmm. it can't be mm -hmm. moved, but what will happen instead? Will it be a compilation error? Will it throw an exception? Is it undefined behavior? What will happen? Okay, so I'm trying to move a const value. Yeah, so when you when you uh, when you're essentially trying to move something, you're converting it to an R value reference, and uh, you're essentially doing like a, a a static cast there, and you cannot remove the constness of the value. So I think it should just be a compilation error, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I like the way you're reasoning about it, but it's not a compilation error. It actually, it fails and it fails silently. It, it actually copies instead of moving. So it doesn't throw an exception. It's not a compilation error. It just copies the object instead of moving it. But what would happen if you, say, uh, had something which had the, like, the copy deleted? Like, if your class, oh, yeah, because you said your class C was empty, so it has a default copy. Yeah, it has but a default, if the default copy. Uh, copy can yeah, if the default copy constructor was deleted, that would fail, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, um, I also wanna, so you're all, you're gonna get this sort of question definitely in a hedge fund interview. Um, they're gonna ask you, mm -hmm. what's your favorite C++ 20 feature? 
Okay. Um, I like the spaceship operator. Uh, what else do I like? Uh, I like core routines, but I haven't had uh, too much uh, uh, too much experience with it yet. Uh, I also like ranges, but uh, I feel like it's uh, it's not really very practical to write ranges at this point because the ranges two is not there yet. So I think that's there in twenty three when you can sort of make like a range ranges pipeline and then do a two into a container, which is what I need to do most of the time. Uh, I like those things. Uh, what else? Uh, okay, I'll yeah, leave it. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. Just a tip for the interview: mm -hmm. don't say what else, because let the interviewer say, "Is there anything more?" Because if you say what else, it's just gonna you're. You're just leaving the door open when the, the I, I could have I could have stopped you after the first thing you mentioned. You know what I mean? I see. Okay. Let uh, me ask yeah. you this. I want to go back to virtual because this question just came up in my mind. And I think one of the people in my Discord actually was asked this question. So guys, join the Discord, join my Patreon to get access to the Discord if you want to be part of this community. So um, let's say you have two classes, class A and class B. Class A is the base class. Mm -hmm. Class B is the child class, so parent child. Okay. Now, class A okay. has a virtual method, not a pure virtual method, yeah. a virtual method. And it okay. calls it in its constructor. Class B yeah. overrides that method. I'm going to keep going because I like, I like what we, the flow state we have going here on here. Class B overrides mm -hmm. that method with its own implementation. Mm -hmm. Let's just say class yeah. A prints one in that method, class B prints two in that method. When I create an instance of that object, what yeah. happens? What gets printed or what, mm -hmm. what gets called, if anything? Uh, I think it will work, but it won't, you won't see uh, the virtualness uh, in the constructors and destructors just because when you're executing A, uh, when like the A's constructor is running, B hasn't been constructed yet. And when B's uh, constructor is running, you're essentially inside B. So you just call B's method. And when you're destructing B, uh, like the destruction order will be reversed. So B destructs first. And because you're in B, you just call the B's method. And then when you're in A, B has already been destructed. So you end up calling A's method. Like in A's destructor, you end up calling A's, A's method. So you don't see the virtualness there. So let me ask you what gets printed. So let me just be clear. In the A's, uh -huh. in A's method, one is printed. And in B's method, mm -hmm. two is printed. So when I construct that object, uh -huh. what gets printed? And uh, let's let's call the function f. Yes. And A's constructor calls f, and yes. B's constructor also calls f. B's constructor does not call f; just A's constructor. Oh, uh, okay. Then uh, it's gonna be one. Okay. And now let me take it a step further. What happens if uh, A? So that's right. What happens if A's method? What if it's a pure virtual method? and B overrides it to print two. So in A, there is no implementation for that method, but B has it printing two. What happens in this case? Yeah, okay. Is the method const? No. I don't think it matters, to be frank. Yeah, I vaguely remember somewhere uh, where the compiler sort of uh, treats it like a static method. If it's not touching any, uh, if it's not touching any members of the class, and then the code just runs, or maybe I'm wrong. Uh, off, off like uh, the top, it just seems like it should fail compilation, but I'm just thinking more whether it might work for some reason. So there is no F in A, you just have like a, an abstract function and then b overrides it but b is not constructed yet so you don't have a method yet when you're running as constructor so it should not work yeah i th i think it shouldn't work so uh, the compiler if you're, if you're not modifying any members of the class what it does is uh, uh it will just uh, sort of make the method static and 
treat it like a sta const static met method. And so you can call it even, oh no, that was through a pointer, right? It's a pure virtual yeah, method. I'm just though. guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so if, I, I think if, if you're not sure, say you're not sure because I don't, I don't like the back yeah, and forth sure. where we're just guessing with each other and I'm trying to figure out what you're saying. Uh, no, I'm not sure. I think it's okay. going to be a compilation failure. Okay, you're, you're actually closer than I expected. It's not a compilation failure. I believe it's undefined behavior. So if you try to call a pure virtual method, a method without an implementation, it's undefined behavior. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, okay. If this video gets posted, before I post it, I will put on the screen whether I'm right or wrong. Because I'm 90% sure that it's undefined behavior and there's not compilation error, but I may be wrong.